So I watch MMA from time to time and have been very intrigued by this Conor McGregor phenomena. And what I've realized is that Conor McGregor must be very proficient at the laws of power. Whether it's conscious or unconscious, I'm not sure. But I'm going to break down the laws of power he uses and give you examples. So let's get into it. Law 6. Court attention at all cost. The first thing you would notice when you look at Conor McGregor is that he stands out. Other fighters go out of their way to blend in. They wear their generic tap-out t-shirts, their generic sponsored shorts, or whatever the hell they wear to training, and they wear that to these press conferences. Conor McGregor is different. He dresses to create an effect. Everything's been placed together to connotate this idea of fuck you i don't give a fuck he wears high-end clothes on purpose he wears the versace t-shirts or the gucci suits the shoes cartier glasses all these things to create an image that stands or sticks in your mind when you look at him and you look at these other fighters in the press conference you're going to remember him because he's different we always remember things that are different so he's used that and leveraged that point to get himself into the eye of the mainstream. He's used his over-the-top attitude, his confidence, braggadociousness, everything to make him stand out. And it's rewarding him greatly. Law 16, use absence to increase respect and honor. At the peak of his career, Conor McGregor became the first UFC double champ. He secured the belt in two different weight divisions, right? And that's when he told the world that he was going to take some time off. He said he was going to take some time off because he was anticipating the birth of his son. Now, I personally don't think this was the only reason he was taking time off. I think it's because of this law of power. When you withdraw from the public eye, once you've already established yourself, you increase your worth. People start talking about you. He held the UFC under siege because... Here he was at the peak, the double champ. Everyone's talking about it. Crazy performance. And then he just fucks off. It's all calculated. It increases his value dramatically. That's the interesting thing about human nature. We always want things once they're more scarce. When things are limited edition, when things are running out, that's when we want them more. So he leveraged that point to increase his value and gain more popularity. Law 31, control the options. Get others to play with the cards you deal. Peter, grab me one, let me see what it look like. See if this bitch wanna bet this. Do what you're told, bitch. Do what you're told, bitch. If you just watched that video, you notice that Floyd got one of his guys to bring a bag from him and corner snaps and says, do what you're told, bitch. What this does is it puts Floyd and his guy in an interesting predicament. If the guy listens to Connor's remark and decides to ignore it and not bring the bag to Floyd, it looks bad on Floyd. It looks like the guy, his own guy, is disrespecting him. If the guy listens to Connor and brings the bag to Floyd, it looks like he's taking Connor's orders as if Connor's his superior. So regardless of which decision he makes, Connor wins. And that is a law of power. Put all the cards in your favor. Make each decision benefit you. Law 29. Plan all the way to the end. I feel I will KO him inside one. If he makes that walk and if he is in the octagon, I feel every single, every single movement I make will get an overreaction off of him because he's emotionally invested in it. There's too much in it for him. That's what I see the fight playing now. I feel him overreacting, overextending. And then being KO'd unconscious. Here we go! Green trunks for the Southpaw, the notorious Conor McGregor. Black trunks for the champion, Jose Aldo Jr. Conor relaxed and smiling. Oh! Oh! Planning all the way to the end is a law of power. It is one that many people don't take advantage of, but Conor obviously does, to the point where he's been called Mystic Mac due to his uncanny ability to predict events such as the way he's going to win fights, which round is going to end, and things of that nature. In reality, it has nothing to do with mysticism. It has everything to do with his planning. When he fights an opponent, he studies the opponent. He studies how the opponent has fought in the end. He tries to gain the mind of the opponent. Everything is strategic to get the end result that he wants. 
even in regards to the whole Floyd Mayweather boxing thing, he got his boxing license, he left UFC when he had enough heat to be able to negotiate such a deal with UFC because they needed him. So everything has to do with planning. Because of his ability to plan all the way to the end, he has now gotten himself into this $100 million fight in in something he probably should not even be stepping into, a boxing match, since he's not a professional boxer, but he's managed to get himself into that position, set himself for life, and you can bet belie- best believe that he has something planned for after this. Law 28, enter action with boldness. Chad Mendez now will fight Conor McGregor for the interim belt. How do you think you match up with Chad? I'm gonna demolish him. I'm gonna rip his head off. This law is probably the most used by Connor. He enters everything with boldness. Now, why would anyone enter action with boldness? The reason you act this way is to exude this idea of supreme confidence. This idea of supreme confidence is not seen often by people. Generally, people are not overly confident in their abilities, so it scares the opponent away. It makes them doubt their own confidence because they're not that confident about it. Now, the trick about this is you don't literally have to believe this confidence that you're exuding. You just have to show it. You have to display it enough to scare off someone or to get into someone's head. That's what Conor does very well. He exudes confidence by telling the person that they're gonna, he's going to knock them out in this round, that he's going to beat them, that he's going to do all these things to fuck with them. Just think of nature. When you look outside and you see a small bird chasing a big bird, this is because of entering action with boldness. If someone who was physically smaller than you was to try and fight you, chances are, Nine times out of ten, you'll try back off, especially if they're supremely confident about it. Just because you don't know what they know. You don't know if they have something up their sleeve that you are unaware of. Why else would they be so confident? It's deceit, and it's a law of power.